Mark Crozer, the man behind Bray Wyatt's theme song, Live in Fear. Excellent song. Great artist. Great to have you here, Mark. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Hello. So you've been in the States for a couple of years now. And within those couple of years, you got your song picked up as one of WWE's Rising Stars theme songs. How does that feel? How did that come about, actually? Uh, it's great. Um, it's uh, It came about, uh, I would say, quite to me, randomly, uh, at least. Um, the song uh, has been, I wrote it about six years ago. Uh, I think it was 2007. And um, I discovered back in 2009 the concept of music libraries where you, you know, people like me can get your songs into music libraries that then try to get them placed in uh, on TV. And I thought I'd give it a shot so I signed up, you know, a uh, number of songs initially. Just I think it was about twenty-five songs, and that was one of them. And um, and then I kind of forgot about it. And last summer, I guess it was beginning of summer last year, two thousand twelve. Uh, I just got this Facebook message out of the blue from somebody um, asking me if my song, if I had a song called "Broken Out in Love," and I said, "Yeah." And you know, he, t he told me it was being used by Bray Wyatt, and I, I looked into it thinking it probably wasn't my song. <laughs> it seemed like such an unusual thing. Because, you know, knowing the songs, I like, well, how is that going to work? You know, I mean, I don't know much about wrestling, but I thought I couldn't imagine how that song would <laughs> would work in context of a, a wrestler. Because to me, it's like, you know, big sort of heavy rock, fast, you know, fast music and everything. And then I checked it out, and it turned out that it was my song. And um, and I instantly I could see that it was really good fit for this particular character. Um, so yeah, it was it was a real surprise. It, it, I hadn't pitched it to that particular, you know, for that particular use. It was it, it just the right song at the right time, um, and you know, uh, the people looking for it just came across my song and instantly thought it was right for it. And there you go. <laughs> and when you saw the Bray Wyatt character for the first time, your re what was your reaction? Because he is a lot different from these stars right now. I mean, there's a lot of comedy characters. Okay, you have your guys like John Cena, Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton. You kind of know what their motives are. They want to be the best. They want to win the championship. Whereas a guy like Bray Wyatt, I mean, that character is totally three-dimensional. Yeah, yeah. The thing um, I like about him is that um, you just, he's kind of unpredictable. <laughs> you don't really know exactly or, or at all what, what's going on in his head you know it, it, uh, and that, uh, that's what I think appeals to people is that there's this kind of edge of like you know anything anything could happen and you know is this is this guy a hero or is he a, a bad guy or is he somewhere in between and um, yeah I think it is it's, it's a very interesting character and, and um, I'm sure even like you know over time it's only going to get more and more interesting and twisted <laughs> <laughs> is it surreal to hear your song though on a song that you you mentioned earlier that you forgot about that's now on monday night raw and friday night smackdown heard yeah. by millions of people every week is that kind of surreal it's, it's completely surreal um it, it's just uh i still can't quite believe that it you know i, I watched it and I, and I hear my song playing and i know it's my song but i still look at it and think this is just <laughs> really weird <laughs> especially i was just um you know, on Twitter, obviously, I, on Monday night, I kind of check out, see <clears throat> what what people are saying sometimes. And um, I think last week there was a talk about, um, you know, everybody was clapping along with the song. And I just thought, wow, this is, this is just too <laughs> too strange. My song is out there, you know, because I feel somewhat disconnected from it, I guess, because I'm here doing my music, you know, in my own little world. And that's kind of taken on a, a life of its own, that even though it's my song, it doesn't feel quite like it's really me my my you know i don't i guess if i was at you know if the day comes where i get invited to to one of the shows and and hear it actually there in the in the arena or or i get to play it even which would be which would be very cool <clears throat> it might sink in a bit more but right now there's a bit of a, i feel a bit disconnected i mean it's fantastic but it's hard it's hard to believe <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can imagine well we'll certainly try to get a petition so you can play at wrestlemania this year or excuse me next year that'd be pretty uh, cool right yeah. To get a petition together. That would be great. Yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to do that. Now, have you met the man behind Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda, or no? I no, I haven't met him. No, we had very brief 
um, interchange on uh, online last year when the song first, you know, when he first started using it, and um, and that was it. You know, uh, I, haven't, I haven't got to meet him yet, but hopefully it'll happen. And we were talking off the air. In this day and age, album sales. Listen, you got your Jay Zs, you got your Kanye West, you got people that are always going to sell hundreds of thousands of albums, but. At, at this stage in the music industry, it's, it's kind of hard to move full albums, at least in, in its current capacity, going to the store, a Best Buy, Target, buying them. I feel like these days there's a lot more outlets for artists independently to get their music out there, whether it be singles, whether it be albums, either via Amazon or iTunes, or even like the way you got out your song through WB Music Group and just making it an entrance theme. Uh, do you think it's easier right now for guys to make money in music? Um. It's different for sure, and um, I don't. Know, I don't know if it's easier, but I think there are more opportunities for independent artists than than there used to be. Um, but the same, there's also obviously a lot more competition. I mean, as time has gone, obviously, you know, back in the fifties and sixties when pop music was first was brand new, it, there was no competition <laughs> you know what I mean it's like bands came along like the Beatles who, I mean I still consider like the greatest band of all time fantastic songwriters but they kind of they were making it up as they went along and there was no one competing in with them really I mean obviously there were bands around but there were there weren't like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bands now now 50 years later you know not only are you as an artist trying to get heard amongst your peers but you're also competing with all the other music that's ever been made mm -hmm. and everyone is a, is obviously going to find something that you know uh that sound like uh, other bands from the past that you sound like and comparing you with whatever so that i think makes it harder for new bands to to actually get heard unless like you say you're um jay-z or like some big artist that you know the label still is putting a lot of money and a lot of time into promoting but I think for, you know, the more kind of classic sounding music like, you know, guitar pop, it's really hard to to get heard. But, you know, I think actually T V and film music is easier for people like me now to access than it was because of the internet. You know, back twenty years ago, whatever, I, I wouldn't have even thought about the possibility of trying of getting my music into a TV show. I seemed like that was just the realm for, you know, signed artists and, um, you know, I don't think music supervisors or whatever would have gone looking for unsigned bands to get in, get on their shows. But now because of the technology and the internet, there's all this music out there and people, um, you know, trying to get heard. And that's, um, that's a, a really good way of, of, of getting your music heard. And it's kind of a new, new thing, I, I think, really. Um, I, don't, I'm not, I don't even know how long music libraries and that kind of thing have been around, but it seems like it's a newish thing, maybe in the last 10, 15 years. It's, easy, it's certainly easier to access. Yeah, I mean, music is definitely easier to access. Um, if you, I, I, I still, I think one of the problems <laughs> is that. You know, I mean, I, I like discovering new music, but it's always hard to know that where to, to look. And, like, you know, you still kind of go to the traditional media, like, you know, print magazines and radio, or whatever. But then you go online and look and uh, search out the bands. I, I mean, I don't know if people buy, I, don't, I mean, people obviously don't buy albums the same way they used to because of things like Spotify. So on the one hand, it's easier to get heard. But the other hand, it's harder to make money. <laughs> you know, I mean, this has been great for me because I mean, I've definitely been selling more albums and songs in the last, uh, well, the last year, but particularly the last few months since this took off than I have before. And I mean, it's great just having this one song has really opened a lot of doors. Now, do you feel like the market in music is kind of oversaturated? You mentioned you're competing with a lot of people. And it and pro wrestling too. These days, you it's hard to find guys that quote unquote know how to work, as in know how to really wrestle. You have guys that really want to be wrestlers, really want to put the time in, and then you have guys that just kind of want to get into it to say they're a wrestler, say to get their face on camera, 
you know, want, want to make some quick money. Do you feel like that's still a problem these days in music as well? Um, yeah, I mean, I, there are definitely way more bands around and there's way more people who are trying to have a, a career somewhat because of the ease of, you know, the technology and the fact you can sit at home and record music and release it. But, I mean, I think ultimately people people aren't stupid. You know, they'll, they'll only buy or listen to something that they like. <laughs> so, I mean, you can't, you've got to have some level of ability to be able to, you know, write a song or craft something that is listenable. Because if you just put out something that's terrible with no merit, I mean, people aren't going to buy it or listen to it. So, you know, you do have to be somewhat talented. <laughs> but, um, there, I, you know, I mean, there's, I guess talent has kind of changed, maybe. I, I don't know. Like, you say, back, you know, look back to 50 years ago, and songs were the kind of heart of what, uh, you know, someone's career was about. Now it's not so much about a song, it's more about a particular kind of image and a kind of a whole package. You know, because I'm like Miley Cyrus, you know, I mean, making a lot of waves for nothing really to do with the music. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I mean, that you can't, a lot of people say, oh, well, she's got no talent, but I mean, that's not true. Obviously, people are, there's something that she does that people appreciate, <laughs> even if it's not necessarily a musical thing. So I can't remember what the original question was. I rambled off completely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe I was, I was trying to ask you if you're, do you feel like the music industry right now is oversaturated with, you know, bands that are, or artists that just kind of want to be in it for wrong reasons and artists like yourself that obviously you do want to make a living, but they're actually real artists, real musicians. Yeah. I mean, I think and that's, but that's probably always been the case as well that people want to do it for the wrong reasons. I mean, but who, who's to say what the right and wrong reasons are? I mean, if you, I'm sure a lot of people started playing in bands just because they wanted to impress girls <laughs> or whatever and they ended up being really good bands. So, I mean, who, who's, who's to say what's the right and wrong reasons? But, yeah, it is um, it is hard to, to, to get heard when there's a lot a lot of music around. And, and, you know, obviously traditional like radio and, you know, music, MTV, does that even play videos anymore? I don't know, but, you know, that's still... I mean, really, really hard to get your song played on a commercial radio station because, you you know, if you're me with just me <laughs> trying to promote myself, you're going up against the, the record labels that are putting money in and have pluggers and all this stuff. So it is, yeah, it is hard to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have the support of WWE fans. You were mentioning this last yeah. year since the song was picked up by WWE. It's Business has been pretty good for Mark Crozer. What's the support been like from the WWE fans? It's been fantastic. Um, uh, you know, every... You know, I went from basically having a couple of people every now and then sending me messages like, oh, I heard your song, I like it, now to... There's just... It's constant, you know, like, people... There's, you know, particularly the WWE fans uh, really vocal about liking my song and I mean you know it, it seems people really love it it's not just a kind of yeah it's all right <laughs> they're really like yeah it's the best thing I've ever heard which makes me feel great of course so it's fantastic every Monday night Friday night whenever there's you know whenever Bray Wyatt's on um on the, on TV then I get you know people tweeting and Facebooking that, that kind of thing yeah. So it's it's great, and like it's just beginning to get to the point like where people are starting to check out my other stuff as well, and like um, I just saw yesterday uh, there was an article on Bray Wyatt in Forbes magazine, which is um, again kind of surprising because it's like a business ma magazine, but you know the the guy writing it was a big fan of WWE, and I'm like, very very you know nice about about my song and saying how great it was and. Uh, it's just, you know, and he, he's a fan of my, you know, the albums I've put out recently too. And just makes me, you know, it's great that people are starting to like get, get into other songs. Absolutely. And, and I have to say, when, when I heard the Chicago crowd last week do the slow clap to your song, I thought, man, like, 
that should be required from now on. And if people don't clap, <laughs> if people don't clap, they should have just a giant sign behind Bray that says clap. Kind of like applause. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely, uh, it's very exciting. I mean, I really hope that I'll get the opportunity to play that song live in front of that kind of audience because it'll be a, a, a trip. <laughs> definitely. Well, Hopefully, we'll get to see that. Mark, I want to thank you so much for your time. Before we go, obviously, people can see on the screen right there. They can check you out at markcrozermusic.com as well as at markcrozer on Twitter. Now, sir, where else can they find you? Any upcoming concerts? Any upcoming events you're involved in? Um, um, I don't have anything, anything live performed uh, uh, coming up in the very near future. I'm trying to put organize um, a, a kind of um, online live show for the end of October, which is actually coming up quite soon, but sometime in the next six weeks, um, which will definitely be, I'll you know, mention it on my Facebook page and Twitter and my website and all that kind of thing, but there's no date for that yet, unfortunately. <laughs> well, we're certainly looking forward to all the things you're doing. Great stuff. Thank you so much for the time. Excellent song. Might be the best WWE theme in a very long time, and we sincerely mean that. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. You too.